John Wanamaker is credited with saying, Half the money I spend on advertising is wasted. The trouble is, I don't know which half. We've come a long way in measuring advertising effectiveness, but we still don't have a single theory of how it works. We have seven. Six come from veteran strategist Paul Feldwick's book, The Anatomy of Humbug. You should read it. A seventh, signaling, comes from Rory Sutherland's book, Alchemy. You should read it too. Don't think of these theories like philosophical theories which contradict each other or are subject to spirited debates. Think of each theory of advertising as layers on a cake. Each theory adds to the truth of the next and each one is important to the overall taste of the cake. But because the cake is so big, most ads are pieces of marketing content, often borrowed from just a few layers. We can only eat so much at a time. In the next series of videos, I'm going to show you a different theory of advertising. Signaling. Hello, I'm a Mac. And I'm a PC. Old Spice and not a lady. I'm I run 17 miles every morning. Great new idea. You want something better. Your Wendy's yeah, is the most interesting brand of the world. Most frogs hide from prey by camouflaging themselves, or at least blending in, to the surrounding environment. This redback frog does the opposite. Its bright red color advertises its presence to potential predators, signaling that it's not worth attacking or eating because it's poisonous. Zoologists and evolutionary biologists have a fancy name for this phenomenon, aposemantism. The milk snake is quite harmless, but like the redback frog, it's also aposemantic, only its signal is dishonest. Its red and white scales have somewhat similar coloring to the poisonous coral snake. The male peacock's feathers make it difficult to get away from a predator, but it signals its virility to potential mates. The commuters at this Washington, D.C. subway station have been given a gift. The music they're hearing is being played by Joshua Bell, one of the world's most celebrated violin virtuosos. But because they're in a subway station, they're receiving the signal that he's simply background music in their busy commute, and they don't appreciate it. Now he's center stage in a concert hall, signaling he's the star. I think the crowd's going to appreciate him. Yeah, that's more like it. This wedding invitation signals that it will probably be a lovely affair, perhaps at a nice hotel or a winery. This wedding invitation signals that there might be a cash bar. You've probably heard of the placebo effect, whereby a patient gets a pill that contains no active ingredient, but they get better. In Australia, a study was conducted with 87 students who complained of getting chronic headaches. The students were shown the label of the drug they were taking. In each box, half the pills contained the active ingredient and half the pills contained placebos. The students did not know if they received the active ingredient pill or the placebo. Those who received the active ingredient reported reduced symptoms more so than those who received the placebo. But the interesting finding was that those who received the branded placebo reported reduced symptoms much more than those who received the generic placebo. Perhaps there is a branded placebo effect. Advertising can be seen as a brand signaling to customers that it stands by the quality of its product. After all, look how much money they're spending advertising it. The act of advertising itself functions as a branded placebo effect. If you buy a Samsung TV and it doesn't work, your family will blame Samsung. If you buy a generic TV and it doesn't work, your family will blame you.